Okay, look, I'll, uh, I'll drop by in about an hour to finish up the paperwork on the drug bust, and then I'll be free for the stakeout. No, I want to. Look, Mac, I appreciate your concern, but I, I don't want you monitoring my schedule, okay? I'm good to go. Let's just leave it at that. Okay, bye. Won't work. What? Cramming every minute won't lessen the pain of losing Jake. It might even get you killed. I know what you're trying to do. There's no need to analyze it. I'm working. It's what I do, you know? I mean, I'm not a prince. I can't just sit around and watch the money roll in. You're burying yourself in your work so you don't have to feel the pain of your loss. Look, yeah, I, get, I, I get that, but sooner or later that's going to catch up to you. I'm not holding anything off. I mean, that's not even possible. The pain I feel is constant, and it doesn't matter where I turn. I mean, if I think about the past and all the memories I have with Jake, it hurts. If I think about the future, the one he's not in, it hurts. You know, Cam and, and Aiden and Spencer, they're going to grow up, they're going to go to college, figure out what they want to do with their lives, and get married or not, have kids or not. There's always going to be that space where, where Jake is supposed to be. But look, man, I, I have to keep moving right now. It's the only thing that's stopping me from diving in the bottle right alongside my dad. Yeah, I was wondering how all of this was affecting your sobriety. Sweet release is calling me. But you have an answer, right? No. I haven't. Even though it feels like the only thing that'll turn off these voices of recrimination. You know, the hardest one to shut off is that voice that keeps telling me what a failure I am. But that's just not true. Well, give me a bottle of scotch, I might agree with you. Look, I promised to protect Jake, and he was supposed to be with me that night. And look what happened. Lucky. His death is in no way, shape, or form your fault. Look, it's hard to understand from the outside. I know you're just trying to help, but it just rings a little hollow right now. Okay. That's fair enough. I just I ask one thing of you, and that's it. If, if you feel like you're going to reach for a bottle or pills or whatever, whatever it is, please just call me first so we can talk it through. You can yell at me, you can do whatever, you can say whatever you want, it doesn't matter. But just give me the opportunity to help you. You know, Jake's death has brought something home to me. Life really is short. I mean, you, you waste a moment, it might be the last one that you get, so I need to tell you something, okay? All right. I might get mad at you. I mean, I'm, I might even hate you for a minute or even a year. But overriding all of that, you're my brother. And I love you. That is the bottom line. It's non-negotiable, and you need to know that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, man. Carly. Hi. Hi. Can I come in? Sure. Yeah, come on. Nice place. It's kind of you. Or what I would think would be your place. Seems like you. No, you've never been here before, have you? No. Yeah. I guess there would be no reason for that, although lots of people are finding a reason now. And you probably just want to be left alone. So why don't I just say what I came to say and then I'll get out of your hair. I didn't mean to be rude. It... You weren't. Oh, good. Filter's not working real well right now, so. I'm not offended. I uh, wanted to tell you that Jocelyn is doing Great. Oh, I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy to hear it. We'd be in a very different place right now if it weren't for you. 
And that's the other thing I wanted to talk to you about. Jason told me that you talked Elizabeth into giving Jake's kidney to Jocelyn, and there are no words to tell you how humbled and grateful I am. Uh, it helps to know that, that she's doing so well. We're related, and I've never done one thing for you. And in the worst moment of your life, you gave my daughter the most precious gift. You're her miracle, and Jake is her angel, and I owe you both the biggest debt. So if there's anything lucky that you ever need, anything, please come to me. I think what I need to do right now is apologize to you. I don't understand. Why would you owe me an apology? I, uh, I jumped to some pretty harsh conclusions about you when I heard you were on the suspect list. And for whatever reason, I decided you were guilty. And I went off on this, you know, judgmental rant about how you only care about yourself. And I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry that I did that. I'm pretty selfish sometimes. And for a few hours, I thought I was guilty. And I never felt so sick or scared in my entire life. So I can um, understand how Luke feels right now. You know, he's feeling what he can, and the rest he denies. I can only imagine that you and your father have a lot of stuff to work out and the last thing you need is unsolicited advice. So, I'll just say this. Luke loves you. I know you love him. And I'm guessing your father could use you right now. And maybe reaching out to Luke will help ease your pain. Thanks for coming by. Whatever you need. Uh... First of all, I want to say how sorry I am, you know, for your loss. Yeah, thank you. I know that nothing helps. Yeah, well, people have to say something, you know? Yeah, I guess. So listen, I, uh, this is my daddy. He's having a hard time. I, I keep hearing how much he needs me. I'm sure he does. Well, that's, that's the problem, because I can't help him right now. I mean, I can't sit with him and, and watch him drink his way through grief when drinking is, is what got Jay killed in the first place. I've got some idea of the roller coaster ride you're on when Michael was shot and he wasn't expected to live. I had so much grief, so much rage, that I wanted the man who put my son in that hospital bed to pay with his life. Yeah, and he did. But that's not an option. No, no, it's not. not. And I had, look, I had somebody to blame, some, the man who pulled the trigger. So I could hunt him down. I could, I could, I could take him out with no mercy. But we're talking about your dad. He would never hurt a child. What happened was it was a terrible accident. He could have, you know, Jay could have easily tripped and fallen into a pool and except, drowned. Except he didn't. He didn't fall into a pool. He wandered into the road where he was hit by my father who was drinking. And look, man, I can't jump on this denial bandwagon that my dad and Lulu are on. I can't pretend that alcohol wasn't a factor when it obviously was. So that means that as much as I want to, I can't comfort my father right now. I can't tell him what he wants to hear. But I'm afraid for him, Sonny. I don't want him to self-destruct. I don't want him to implode. 
I just can't help him. So I'm asking you, can you do that for me?